Right. So again, I'm Carla, and I'm the onboarding manager for What Counts. So I am responsible for working with any new clients that come into the What Counts uh, organization or onto our platform, uh, sort of a project manager, and just making sure that, that they have everything they need uh, to be successful with our platform. So I've probably worked with some of you listening today uh, at some point or another. So I want to talk to you just to start a little bit about why you should use SMS or why SMS is such an important part of a marketing, um, you know, your marketing for, for your company. Um, email is still the best channel uh, for marketing, uh, but SMS is very quickly becoming a viable option. So we're super excited to have that as part of our platform. So, just a couple of statistics, 97% of Americans use mobile messaging. If you guys are anything like me, my mobile device is practically attached to my hip. <laughs> it probably should not be, but it is. And I communicate with, you know, a lot of different people via text. So, you know, a company that I've made a purchase with or, you know, my electric company, I can pay my bill via text message. Um, or they can send me a text letting me know it's been paid, you know, communicating with friends and, and things like that. So everybody is really, really into SMS right now. 98% open rate is the average for a text message. So when you think about how tremendous the impact would be if you're using SMS to reach your, your consumers and your customers. And then there's an average of a 45% response rate. So if you're asking them to respond to you with some information, we've got a pretty good response rate uh, using SMS. And then 75% of consumers appreciate or approve of receiving offers and coupons via SMS. So if you're sending your customers and sending your subscribers some sort of incentive via text message, um, you're going to get a great uh, response to that, typically. And then there was a study conducted uh, by a research company that showed 74% of respondents had a better impression of businesses that utilized SMS. And then further, 70% of those uh, thought that it got their attention. So some great, uh, some great statistics there in terms of SMS. And then to the right here, so I wanted to bring your attention to, and we're going to talk a little bit about opting in uh, for text messages, how you can add that to your sign-up form, and really how SMS and email can really be great partners. So this is just an example of the opt-in form that we have on the What Counts website. So where visitors to the What Counts platform can or to our website rather, not the platform, visitors to our website can opt in to our newsletter. So as an aside, if you guys haven't already done that, I would encourage you to, we've got some great information that comes out uh, in that newsletter. So we have a, an option here where they can not only sign up for a weekly newsletter or for webinar updates via email, but they can also opt in to receive alerts via text message. So you typically want to have this unchecked. We do have it checked here, so we're probably not following our own, our own recommendations. Um, typically, you want to have those boxes unchecked, and that's true with email as well. Um, you want to allow the subscriber to check that box and say, yes, I do want to receive messages from you, whether it's email or text. So here, they would then be able to enter their, their phone number. We've got a field for that. They enter their phone number. Yes, I want to receive text messages from you. So you've got that opt-in. So you would, uh, you would be able to just very easily build that into your existing opt-in form uh, and just be able to get their phone number that way. So, Moving back into the how complementary SMS and email can be to each other. So we can obviously very easily integrate the two. You've got another touch point in your customer communication plan. 
um, uh, you know, utilizing both of those is going to allow you to dial in your, your timing. Obviously, more consumers are checking email more and more on their mobile devices. So you've got a two for one there. They can get your email that you're sending because they're on their mobile. And then SMS is going to add another dimension to that. And then just here on the right is just sort of an example of the um, how you're going to be able to edit and create your messages uh, in the What Counts platform for SMS. And we're going to show you that a bit later on when we actually go into, uh, into the demo component. So I want to just go through um, now some things you should know about SMS. So unlike email, we're not able to just sort of turn a switch or flip a switch and have you able to use the feature immediately. So SMS um, legally is much, much different than can spam. So there's a lot of setup that's gonna be involved in getting you ready to send SMS messages from our platform. So I wanna just go through a couple of the need to know and we're going to have all of this documented for you you can reach out to your customer success manager if you'd like to get started with sms and they can give you all of this documented so don't feel like you have to remember uh, remember all of this now or write anything down so one key component to sending an sms message is you will need to tell us the type of messages that you will be sending so if you're sending marketing messages, for instance, so you are sending a, a coupon or you're marketing your business in some way, you will need what is called a short code. So you'll need to either have a short code that you can then transfer to what counts and our SMS partner, so the company that we're working with to tie SMS into our platform, You'll need a short code that you can transfer, or if you don't already have a short code, we can work with you and with our partner collectively to guide you through buying a short code. So you would need to either have one that you can transfer already, or you would need to go through the steps of actually buying a short code. If you're not going to send marketing messages, you can just use what's called a long code. And that's just a fancy way of saying phone number. So it would actually be you know, an actual phone number. And that's going to be for non-marketing messages. And we have to be very careful with that um, because of the FCC regulations. We can't send marketing messages from a long code or your phone number. You can have both. So if you're sending both types of messages, you can certainly have both if you want to, uh, if you want to do that. So again, you will need to either have one that you can transfer or what counts will work with you uh, and our, and our uh, SMS partner to get a code or a phone number purchased for you. So we don't have a shared pool of codes. Um, we'll, need to, we'll need to work with you to actually procure uh, a number. So timeline for that. If we're starting from scratch and we're getting a new short code uh, that, you'll, that you'll need, the process for that is about 12 to 14 weeks. And I know that number sounds ridiculous. I thought it did too. Uh, but the reason for that is we are essentially sending, or our partner, our SMS partner, is sending your SMS program. So we're going to need you to fill out a program brief and tell us exactly what your SMS program is going to entail, the types of messages you'll be sending, how someone opts in, we want to make sure that you've got terms and conditions, outlined, all of those things. So they are, in essence, vetting your SMS program with the carriers in the U.S. So by carriers, we, of course, mean AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, all of those guys. So those are the big, the big ones, obviously, but it will be sent to all of the U.S.-based carriers and they will look over your brief and make sure that, that it is FCC compliant. Um, so that's the reason for that very lengthy amount of time. Now, if you already have a code, 
and you're just transferring it, there's still some time. You're still going to be sent to it's still going to be sent to the carriers to make sure that everything is is as it should be. But the time frame is much shorter, so we're looking at about six to eight weeks uh, if we have a code that we are transferring. So that brief can be shared with you uh, by your customer success manager. So if you're interested, reach out to them. They also have a compliance checklist that they can share with you, and that will go through um, essentially all the things that you'll need to have in your program in order to be FCC compliant. So as I mentioned earlier, SMS is a totally different thing from, from email, so much, much different than can spam. So the SMS feature is currently in its initial phase. So this is going to be our first iteration of that. We will add some functionality down the road. But for now, all phone numbers must be gathered outside the platform and imported into what counts. So unlike email, where you could tie in, for those of you who may have attended our sign up for and builder uh, webinar, you're not able to connect that, have a, a direct connection, in other words, to what counts and have that information fed into what counts. So for now, you're going to need to import the phone numbers that you'll be texting manually. Um, so it'll have to be gathered outside of what counts. So current functionality uh, is going to be sending messages, of course, so we can send and respond to messages. This is somewhat limited, but there is two-way messaging that is supported, meaning you can send a message and your subscriber can send a message back. And what counts will, will gather that. We are going to support an API. Uh, that's about a month away, uh, but we will have uh, API support and we'll, of course, have documentation for your developers uh, who want to use that. There is also no limit to the number of messages that you can send. You will, however, be charged for every outgoing message. So just bear that in mind. And when we do the demo, I'm going to show you when you're building your message, it's going to tell you how many, you know, how many messages that's going to be. So we have a character limit. It'll tell you exactly how many messages uh, you have you have used so far. All right. So we're going to go right into uh, the demo portion, and I want to show you a couple of things uh, related to that uh, in terms of how the SMS feature works in our platform. So if you guys will bear with me momentarily, I'm just going to minimize my screen here. And we're going to log right into the WhatCount platform. All right, and I did get an alert that some of you weren't seeing my screen. So if anybody's not seeing that, certainly let me know. Um, you should be seeing the What Counts platform right now. We're actually logged in. So if you guys aren't seeing my screen, uh, please use the raise hand tool and let me know. Perfect. All right. So we're going to go here on the left hand side. You guys are probably all familiar with this if you've been using um, our, our platform for email. We're going to navigate over to the navigation bar. I'm going to click on SMS. Um, you, of course, will see this once we have you set up with SMS and we've gone through the whole setup process and all that. We will turn it on inside of your realm. So we're going to start with messages here on the left. And this is just a demo account that we're looking at. So there's going to be some information already set up. Um, so I'm going to show you guys that. We're going to go through how to import subscribers. I'm going to show you how to see the sender code, how to build a message, and then we're also going to go through sending a message. Um, and we're going to show you our new deploy wizard. So you guys will see that next week. Anybody who's on the staff platform uh, will see the new deploy wizard next week. We're excited to show that to you. All right. So here in the SMS uh, portion, we are on the Messages tab to start. 
And these are messages that we have, we have already built out. So messages that we want to send to our subscribers. So you'll see that we have a number of different ones here. They of course all have a name and then our ID number. And I wanted to show you, we're going to click on one here and show you how we can edit it and how we would actually create one. So this is one that's obviously been created, but you have your name here at the top. So you would just, you can call that again, whatever you'd like. So if you think of it like a template of sorts, like when you're creating your email template, your subscriber is not going to see the name of the template, right? So they're not going to see the name of your message. They're only going to see what's here in the actual message text. Uh, one fun thing that I do like about this is that we can do emojis. So those of you who are, are emoji fans or want to be able to use those, you can use emojis. So we just click on the emoji icon here. And you'll see that we've got a lot of different ones that we can choose from. So if we just tab through there. And you can add that right into your message. But what it's also going to tell you is the number of characters that you have used and how many are remaining. So there is a character limit for SMS, and this will sort of count it down for you. So we can see I've already used 49 characters, uh, or 49 characters are remaining, sorry. And then we have one message. So what this would do is if we continued to type something here, it's going to continue to count those characters. And if it, for some reason, it's going to have to be broken into two messages, it will tell you that. So in other words, if you, if you use up the character limit for one message and it has to start another message, it's going to tell you that here. So you'll remember or want to keep in mind that you are charged per message. So as you're typing out that message and creating the message, you'll want to be sure that you're paying attention to that um, and that you're not sending more than you more than you intend. So this is how we would create a message then and of course can edit it if we need to do that. And I'll just show you a couple of other ones here. You can see they're all editable. And then we can also do what's called a preset message. So this would be if, if a subscriber, if you wanted to set up things like if a subscriber types help or, you know, some sort of short one word message, if you will, you can set up a default response. So here we have one for help. And if we click on this, here's the pretext uh, message here. So this is essentially what the subscriber would receive. Uh, back, and if we wanted to create a new one, click Add here, and you could have just some sort of default response. So if someone texts, oh, so we've already used that. Okay, so it will tell you that we already have one set up with that, but essentially this is going to work so that if a subscriber types help, this is the message they're going to receive by default. So it's just an automated, automated or rather automatic uh, message. We can also see any inbound messages. So you can see we've got a number here. If someone responds to the text message that you send out, what counts is going to is going to receive that and process that you would see it here in inbound messages. So remember, we have two-way messaging uh, that is supported. So these would be any inbound messages. And then you have your sender codes. So you can have multiple codes. Um, so remember, we could have a sender uh, or a short code, rather, if you're doing um, marketing messages. You can have just a long code if you're sending non-marketing messages. Or you could have multiple short codes. So if you wanted one short code for one side of your business and another short code or, or phone number for another side of your business, you can certainly do that. Um, and then you could just decide which 
sender, and I'll show you when we deploy the message, you're going to choose the sender code that's actually going to send uh, that message. So then we also have subscribers here. These are exactly what it sounds like. These are the SMS subscribers. So one important detail that I do want to mention about how phone numbers are stored. So going back to the, the legal components of SMS, so it is much, much different than CAMSAM uh, because we are dealing with the FCC. And so in thinking about that, we are storing phone numbers separately from the subscriber table. So for you guys who are sending email, um, you're probably aware that email subscriber information is all stored in a subscriber table. So with SMS, this is a completely separate import and completely separate storage. So it is not going to be stored in the same table as the subscriber. However, if you import a name and an email address and a phone number, we will run that against the import and do a lookup and so if that person is already subscribed, then we'll update their record. In other words, if you're giving us email, phone number, address, we're gonna check and see if there's already a subscriber with that information using email and phone or email and name as the uh, as the identif as the identifier. Sorry about that. And uh, we will we will match it and update the record for you. You can, however, just give us phone numbers. That's not a problem. Um, if you give us an email, though, and a name and a phone number, and it doesn't match, then we're not going to import the phone number. So you'll just want to bear that in mind. So if you're going to pass us the the email and the phone or email and the name in the file, and there's no match for it when we run it against the subscriber table, then the phone number is not going to be imported. So just bear that bear that in mind. So let's go into, and I want to show you how to import your subscriber. So I do have an example file on my desktop. We're going to go through that process. So the import process, again, is completely separate from importing email addresses. So if any of you are importing email addresses or subscribers using a CSV file, you're going to import this differently. So you will go into the SMS section here, and then we're going to click on the Import Subscribers tab. So I'm going to click on that now. There are going to be some import instructions that you will see here. This is essentially just outlining exactly what I just what I just mentioned. You can pass us um, the subscriber ID, the first name, the email address if you're using customer key. So for any of you who might be using customer key as the unique identifier versus first name and email, you can pass us that as well, but you'll need to make sure that we already have that subscriber uh, on file, otherwise it's not going to import it. So these are just some sample rows. Uh, this, will, this will, I believe, stay here. I don't think this is gonna go away with, with the release next week, so you should still be able to see the import instructions. Um, but we're going to go through and upload a file. I'm going to click on my Upload button here. I've got a CSV file that I have saved on my desktop. And I'm going to upload. Oops. So that's just telling me my file has imported successfully. And I'll just show you my CSV file here. You, of course, can have, you know, as much information as you need. These are just my columns here. You will need to have country and phone at a minimum. So we've got to know where that phone number is, whether they're, you know, presumably here in, in the U.S., and then the actual phone number. So we need area code, the exchange, and then the last uh, four digits. So that's my example file. So now that I've imported that, I should be able to go into my subscribers. 
and we should see that phone number. So we'll see it here. So this is the, the 770 uh, area code 555 exchange 1234. So this is the phone number that I just imported. So I can now see that they are in my subscribers. So we obviously we have some other subscribers here that you can see that we've added and then the phone number here. All right, so let's then, I wanna show you guys how to, we've talked about how to create a message. Now I wanna show you the new deploy wizard. So even for those of you who are not gonna be using SMS, um, you will see the new deploy wizard next week. We are gonna deploy that to, or push that to the staff. Um, I think you'll find it's a bit more intuitive. It's uh, much, I think, a bit easier to navigate. It's not this very vertical um, campaign wizard. So I think you're going to like it. So we'll go in and actually do that now. So all of your SMS information is going to be stored here under the SMS tab. But if we're deploying a message or sending an email, we're still going to do that through the task. So we're going to go into tasks, deploy campaign, because even though it's an SMS, we're still going to consider that a campaign. So we'll deploy them exactly, uh, exactly the same. So I'm going to go up to my tasks menu, and I'm going to choose deploy campaign. So you guys will see this looks a bit different than the current uh, wizard, the current deployment wizard. Uh, here at the top, we would choose our deploy preference. So you'll notice that we have email only. So if you're just sending an email message, we'll choose email. For those of you who, who won't have SMS, you will just see email. Um, we're not going to see the option for SMS or email and SMS. I am going to choose SMS, though, because I want you to see how we would deploy that. So I'm going to choose that radio button. And then I'm going to choose the actual message that I want to send out. So these are those messages that we saw earlier that we edited. The, you know, welcome to Atlanta, our alert message that we saw. So just as you would when you're sending an email, think of this as your template. So you're choosing your template. What, what message are you sending to those subscribers? So I'm going to just choose one here from my pull down menu. And then I choose my sender. So you'll remember that I mentioned you can have multiple codes or multiple phone numbers, and you can send it from a select sender. So what counts will set these up for you once you have your sender code or your phone number. This is something that we'll do on the back end of your account, and you'll see these listed there. So it's not anything that you're going to have to enter in or, or have to remember and, and manually type in. So you'll only see what we have, what we've set up for you and enter. So we just choose a, uh, a sender. And then we're going to choose uh, the list that we're sending it to. So we can also send, so we can send the message to everyone who's a part of this code that we've set up, so our, our short code, or we can send it to a group. So if you think about it like with email where we're segmenting, right? So we're putting somebody in a specific group that we want to send to. So that's what we're going to choose here. I'm just going to choose uh, this, uh, the first one here. And then we can assign a task name. So think of this like email as your campaign name. So some sort of identifier um, so that you can go back when you want to make sure that that message has been sent, we want to look at some of the tracking, we'll be able to go back and identify it by that task name. And then you can also include a description if you like. I'm going to click Next. And this is your uh, sort of your last chance if you think about the um, when you're sending an email message, you get that message letting you know, hey, check check your uh, your confirmation message, check your list, check your template, make sure that you're sending this to whom you want to send it. 
and that everything looks correct. So I can see here I'm sending only an SMS. I am sending it to, or I'm sending rather my Atlanta message. This is the message that they're going to see. Welcome to Atlanta. This is my sender code. So this is who the uh, recipient, the text message recipient is going to see. So they'll see that it's coming from this particular number. I'm sending it to everyone who's in this group. And you'll see that there are 10 numbers in this group. So 10 people are going to, um, or 10 people are in this group rather. My task name is listed here. And then of course I don't have a description because that is optional. And then going to click send at the bottom. And we'll wait for that to refresh. All right. So if we then check our campaign, we should see that message here. Just going to sort this. All right. So here it is here at the very top. We have an ID number. We can see that that message has deployed. And if we go into our tracking, we'll see it here as well. So this is just going to help you track and see that the message did, you know, did in fact uh, deploy once you've actually uh, sent it out. All right, so again, just high level, we're, we're probably going to have some changes down the road. Again, the feature is expected to be released next week, uh, sometime next week. Anyone who's on the staff, though, the deployment wizard that we just saw, you will see that. Um, so even if you don't have SMS, that's going to be visible to anybody on the staff. Um, so you will see that new deployment wizard sometime next week. I will make an official announcement when that release goes out. But again, if you guys have any questions about SMS and getting started with SMS for, uh, for your business, please reach out to your customer success manager. They will be able to get you the information you need, get you some pricing, um, let you know how all of that's going to work. We are going to have a training video, sort of a simulation on SMS. That you guys will have visibility to. We'll also have written documentation in our help center so that when you're ready to, to use the feature, uh, you will have that information available. So, if anybody has any questions, I did see a couple of questions uh, come through and we'll take a look at those. If you guys have any, feel free to send those over. I'm going to hang out for a few minutes. And I'll be happy to answer this for you. Or again, uh, just reach out to your customer success manager and they can help you uh, get started. So one question I did have, just for those of you who are still listening, um, the question was about the 12 week setup time uh, for checking your brief. So yes, so in that 12 week time, and again, that's if you don't have a short code or you don't have a number already. So in other words, if you're not using SMS currently, right, so you don't have a number, you don't have a code, and you're essentially starting from scratch. If that's the case, we can help you facilitate getting that number. We'll work with our partner to help you get that number. And yes, that 12 to 14 week period is procuring that number. And then we are working with our partner who are working with all of the U.S.-based cell carriers to sort of verify or, or um, you know, look into your SMS program. So in thinking about that, you will need to have all the ways that someone can opt into SMS. And if that's not live, that's fine. You can have screenshots or mock-ups of what that's going to look like. And essentially, that's what the carriers are looking for. They're looking to make sure that your SMS program is compliant and that you are, you're not just texting people, right, um, who have it opted in. So they are looking for that. And then they're also making sure that all of the terms and conditions
positions are are laid out. So all of the legalese that you see, if you guys have opted in text messages, you know, letting them know that there are, are rates that are going to apply, you know, their carrier is going to charge them for, for receiving those text messages. So unlike email and, and hand spam, we've got, you have to make sure that, that all of that uh, information is laid out and it's visible and apparent to the folks who are opting in, how often they're going to hear from you and, and the types of messages they're going to receive. So yes, that 12 week period is what's going on there. And to be clear, it's not what counts who's doing that. It's not our partner who is doing that. It is the US-based phone carriers who are looking at that information and, uh, and making sure that it's compliant. Yes, yeah, so another question was if there are any automatic replies available for inbound to contact customer service. So yes. You can do that. You would need to set up a preset message. So ideally, you would set it up so that if they typed in sort of a keyword, then they would get that automatic reply. So you could, in your out, in all of your outgoing messages, perhaps you could say, you know, contact or type this message for uh, for help or what have you, and then there could be a message to let them know they need to contact customer service. So yes, you would be able to, to do the automatic replies, uh, just set those up via the preset messages. And we are recording this demo, so I will send that out to everybody. Um, and then one of the questions was about the API. Uh, once it is in place, will it be possible to do automated, or automated rather, transactional text? I don't know the answer to that yet because I haven't seen the documentation for API. Um, so I can't answer that for you right now, but we will have API documentation for SMS uh, very shortly. So it will outline all the ways in which you can, you can leverage an API. Yes, so another question was, if you will be able to see the emails and text sent in a subscriber's record or will the lookup be two spots? So it will be separate. So we are storing that information separately. Um, so SMS and email are separate. And another question was if you have a short code already, do you need an additional implementation partner or just what counts? So if you have a short code already, uh, you can reach out to your customer success manager. We can help you get that code transferred to our partner. So we are using an SMS partner, uh, using their platform that is sort of hooked into what counts to send those messages. So no, you would not need an additional partner to be able to send text messages. If you have, if you have a short code already, we can help you get it transferred. And another question is that we have plans to add personalization or calendar features for SMS. So yes, you will be able to schedule. That is going to be part of the current um, iteration of SMS. You will be able to schedule those. Um, so when you're going through the deployment wizard, you will be able to schedule that uh, just as you would an email campaign. So SMS scheduling will be supported. So we cannot send images. Um, so that was one question is if you can send images as well as text. Uh, we can't send images right now outside of the emoji. And another question was if we could comment on typical cost per message. So Cost per message uh, is going to be based on the number of messages that you're sending. So just like email, we have a cost per message based on the number of emails that we expect you to send in a given month. So your, your customer success manager would need to get you that information because it will be based on the number of messages uh, that you are sending. So if you can give them the number that you expect to send per month, 
then they can give you the cost for them. All right, guys, so there's a, a lot of other messages or questions that have come in. I am going to send those out to your customer success manager so they can get you that information. Um, but if you guys have any questions about uh, the feature specifically, please feel free to let me know. I'll be happy to answer those for you. Again, this is being recorded. We will send that out to you and we will have some documentation and such uh, that will be going out in the next, uh, probably in the next week. Um, so you'll have that visible um, in our health center. I got to everyone's questions. I sent some of you uh, messages privately. Um, so if you had questions uh, that your CSM can answer, I'll make sure that they uh, know that you attended and had some questions. So we'll go ahead and wrap it up for now. Um, again, if anybody has any questions, let me know. I'd be happy to get those answered for you. But otherwise, feel free to go ahead and drop off. I appreciate you all joining me. Again, this is recorded, so we'll have it available on our website shortly.